Do your milling operations make you look like this? It's time for an upgrade. If you've got one of these mills, you suffer from the axis of evil locks. Let's upgrade these puppies. But look at that, like, you can't even see them from up here. You got, you got to reach underneath and then there they are. Like, what the heck is that? So let's change that and uh, let's have some fun. For this project, we're going to require the following. To do that, we're going to need some flat stock. We're going to need some half inch round bar, uh, some flat stock, one eighth of an inch by one inch in width, three quarter inch round stock that will make the washers from, and eight uh, bolts. And notice for all of you OCD people, I put this one crooked to drive you completely mad. So that's what you'll need. These are the bolts that we have to upgrade. They're not quite one and a half inches long, but they pretty well go all the way in before they push against the gin. So that's the length of thread that we need on our shafts that are up here. And these are 5 16 18 threads DPI, okay? Start by making these shafts, which will include our bolt, the shaft that will extend past the frame and whatnot. All right, let's go. All right, so we need about two and a half quarter inches to clear the frame. So that's the length of shaft will minimum that we require. But since we need to set in the pivots onto the shafts, we need an extra half inch. So we'll make them two and a three quarter inches. Face off. Do a quick check. Okay, we're at 35. All right, so 37 thousandths to go.
I didn't show it uh, on camera, but it's always important to get a, put a chamfer on the end of your, um, the, the part that you're gonna be a bolt out of because it gives your die a fighting chance to get on. Put some oil, cutting oil. We'll use this uh, chuck to give us some, uh, a chance to get on straight. Once we get started, you're all right. And there you go, my friends. We reached the end. Okay. All right, let's let's put the little chamfer at the end. Okay, so now that we have our shaft and the included uh, 516 18 bolt, um, what I want to do is nail a couple of flats here and here in order to accommodate a 7 16 wrench. And the reason for that is I need to put this, you know, screw this in to the, the case, the, the, the mill, and determine where this, the bolt is gonna sit at a vertical stance so that later on we know where to put the pivots. Okay, so we're ready to mill. I've already uh, made the appropriate measurements. Essentially what we're gonna do is take 31 thousandths off the top and then turn the piece around and do the exact same thing uh, on the other side. And that'll give us uh, the difference, which will be a 74, 716 wrench. All right, here we go. One side done, we'll flip that around, do the other side. So I've got the shafts all done with the flats. So what I've done is I've uh, screwed them in and uh, I've already attempted this, so I know where it's gonna go, but I made a couple of vertical marks where it still turns, but it doesn't take a whole lot to, uh, to get them tight. Now, the whole idea is like once you put those pivots in, uh, you're only gonna get about, like if you look at a clock or anything like, from a movement from approximately 12 o'clock to two o'clock. So that's where you want to, you know, gauge this up here. See, like, imagine, imagine the connecting rod going like this. It's not going to go that far. So when I go with this, all of a sudden I'm nice and tight on the handle. And if I bring it back to the 12 o'clock position, I'm able to move the axis. That's what you want. Okay, so now we're onto our pivot. We have two pivots, the front one and the rear one. And they are both slightly different. I mean, very slightly. The only difference is this particular bolt hole. This one is going to be for that half inch shaft that we just produced on each. This is going to be the two holes for 1030 seconds or 1032 TPI uh, bolts, which will hold the um, connecting rod. And this one additionally 
will uh, be a bolt of the same size as this one, which will uh, also serve to hold the, the handle, which we'll use to lock the axis. Okay, so now it's time to drill some holes. And uh, of course, uh, uh, to try to avoid using nuts on the other side to hold the bolts. Simply going to um, thread these holes on the bottom side. And then of course, later on, we have to put a slit on both of these uh, underside of the pivot uh, in order for the connecting rod, rod to slide inside this pivot. All right, there you go. Okay, so I've drilled all my holes and uh, this one's a half an inch. This is the number 21 drill bit. And I did a countersink on the top half of the piece so that uh, when I do the thread, it's gonna be only on the other side. Remember, there's gonna be a slit here on the bottom of these pieces. In any case, all my bits, my, uh, <laughs> all my parts fit nicely. But um, there's one thing I didn't mention earlier. The set screw, I'll move the camera for you. There's a set screw that has to go on each side of these pieces to hook up, you know, to, to uh, screw on the shaft. In my case, I've put them on the outside of the parts so that I wouldn't have difficulty screwing them in. I suggest you uh, consider doing that as well. Anyway, so at this point, what we need to do is make this slit on the bottom of these parts here and that's gonna to have to come up approximately half an inch just to give everything nice clearance. Uh, I'm going to use a grinder to do that. There's no need for extreme accuracy. You know, if you wanna use a, you know, a, your mill with a slitting saw, just go for it, it's all good. But a, a grinder with a 1 8 uh, disc will do the trick and it'll be fast. So that's the whole name of the game for me. Here we go. Just like that, I'm done. Okay, so here we are. We've got the pivots done. Uh, the all drilled and tapped. The set screws on each side. Nice and easy to reach. Uh, this is for the handle. And of course, we need that connecting rod. So I've made one. This is basically what you need to do. Uh, put your flat stock in here. Mark for your holes, drill the holes, and then don't forget to do this. Otherwise, as this rotates, you know, goes like this and whatnot, it needs to uh, to be able to conform to the, to, to the shape. So that's what you need to do. Now, as I go in pretty well any project, I keep revising what I do, and sometimes I figure out that I've done, done some real bonehead moves or create some extra work for myself. Uh, and in this case, I just realized I didn't have to tap these holes. I don't need washers to hold them in or lock rings in the back or any such thing. Because uh, quite frankly, these set screws are holding perfectly fine. And so why give myself additional work? There's no need. Like if you really wanted to get gung-ho, you could mill some flats here, little flats for them to sit in. But honestly, 
there's not a force a lot of force of being applied to this so uh that would be completely unnecessary so at this point all we need is put the connecting rod in place screw it in screw my hands but it's this simple and it doesn't need to be overly tight here because the uh the holes in the connecting rod are oversized so they don't actually thread into the, the screw, right? There you go, just snug just so that screws don't come loose. And now we need our handle to go out here. And uh, I've already figured out that uh, it's gonna clear the ways, you know, because the handle's at the bottom. So it's not an issue at all. Um, that 12 to two o'clock range in order to lock the axis is perfectly fine. Even if you had to give a little more of a tug, uh, there's plenty of room for it. So let's make a handle. Okay, so there's my handle. I just used a uh, piece of scrap that I found, put a red hot, forged a flat spot on it, bent it. So I've got about a six inch uh, uh, length from the bottom part of that. That's about two inches a uh, flat and of course the angle takes up another inch or and a half or whatever but uh it works perfectly so this was really simple to make um and look at this uh it locks really well like this is the end of its range and there you go this is nice and loose so let's just uh test it out for you so you can actually see okay so as you can see, it moves freely. And a little tug of the hand and she's locked, like she's not going anywhere. There's my backlash. <laughs> so that's it and uh, you know, no more dirty hands. So please go ahead and make this thing and uh, hopefully it works out for you. Don't wait as long as I did. Take care everyone, bye-bye.